Hello, I'm Brian Bolio. Thank you for joining us for this July 8th edition of FedWatch. There are three main points we'd like to cover with you today. The first one is consumer spending. Um, it's been holding the economy up, and indeed the, the consumer's balance sheet still looks good. Their ability to service debt still looks good, but there are indications that their desire to spend is going to be uh, waning, and, and maybe even their ability to spend toward the end of this year. Check out the uh, executive summary in the July issue of the issue of the Trends Report um, for more information, but just wanted to give you a heads up that there's some more weakening going on in the economy. At the same time, you may have read a headline about the un employment, rather not unemployment, but employment uh, coming in at 209,000 jobs being formed in the latest month. That's using seasonally adjusted data. We use not seasonally adjusted data. As some of you may know, it's cleaner. It's, uh, it's not being statistically manipulated by anybody. And that data came in well in for May. It was, it was a nice, strong number. Uh, employment's up 2.7% from a year ago. We've been running at about that rate for the last three to four months. A record number of people are employed uh, as of May. We don't expect to see any distress until September. The not seasonally adjusted number will likely go down in September. It'll likely go down in December. Um, and that's when in those two months will book and what we expect to see is a generally weakening in the employment trend. Our outlook has employment actually uh, running below year ago levels the deeper we go into 2024. And that's going to be something the Fed's going to pick up on and it will give them some latitude to perhaps, we think, start lowering interest rates. The cost of labor continues to be very high, though, and that's an inhibiting factor, and it's probably going to be one of those factors that causes the Fed to raise interest rates uh, one more time, at least, uh, maybe two more times before they are done. And tangentially, I looked up what the uh, labor productivity trend was doing, and that's getting weaker, by the way. Labor productivity is down 2.5%. So what that means is the unit cost per widget manufactured in the United States is going up. Labor is up 5.1%. Labor productivity is down 2.5%. Every unit we're producing in general is costing more, which is going to be impinging upon corporate profitability, which is already weakening. Um, that again ties in with the recessionary trend and the Fed eventually being able to lower interest rates. And that's the third point. The Fed will eventually be lowering interest rates, but there's a very strong probability, and they've stated it themselves, that they're going to be pushing interest rates up at least one more time. We think that they are going to. Uh, we think it'll be a 25 basis point rise. They'll do it in increments. It'd be great if it was just one. I wouldn't count on that, though, um, because they're looking at those same high labor costs, and, and that's the stubborn part of inflation right now. And this is really tangential to point number three, but beware of the stock market. When the Fed raises interest rates, uh, that could be a trigger point for the stock market. Our analysis on the market, uh, we, really good uh, S&P 500 page in this July issue of the Trends Report. Take a gander at it. There's some um, storm clouds clearly building on the horizon when it comes to uh, the stock market. And that may also give the Fed latitude to eventually raise interest rate, uh, lower interest rates. But in the meantime, with the stock market going up, that's probably giving them more of a signal that they can raise interest rates. We're about at the top. We're not there yet. In the meantime, this economy is clearly chugging toward that recession in 2024, late 2023, for manufacturing and overall U.S. industrial production. Thanks for watching this edition of FedWatch. We'll see you next week.